Hey guys, this is the second part in this series of videos in which I'm showing you how to create a snake game using only plain HTML and JavaScript. In the first part, we have set up the initial grid and also we have created the initial random locations for the snake's head and its initial tail segment. If you haven't yet watched the first part, then it is very important to watch it first because otherwise you will not be able to connect what is going on in this second part. So now in this part, we need to set up the initial rodent so get the random rodent location and that can be done by creating a new function because we are going to fetch the random rodent for each frame so it is better to create a function for it to create a function for a rodent we can name it as get random rodent and it is going to accept two arguments the first one is going to be the size of the grid and the second one is going to be the snake object so in this function, the first thing that we need to do is to fetch the available blocks which are not yet occupied by the snake and then we will select a random block out of those available blocks to be used for the rodent's location and to fetch the available block we need to create another function and let's just call it function get available blocks to fetch the available blocks let's first have an array and let's just call it blocks this is going to have all of the blocks which are available and not yet occupied by the snake. Let's create an array which will hold the location for the snake's head and its tail. So let snake arr equals to a new array. First we are going to populate it with the snake's tail using the spread operator. So snake.tail and then we can use the object for the snake's head. And then we will need to write a simple nested for loop which is going to check if the tables cells are sharing their location with any of the snake's head and any of the snake's tail segment. Actually it is only one snake head but you get the idea. And to check if the snake array is similar to any of the cell we will need to iterate over all of the snake array items. And for that we need to create another function because we will need to call this code logic again and again inside this nested for loop. So we can call this function as if array has block this is going to accept the block array. In our case it is going to be this snake array and the block as well which is going to be compared against each of the blocks inside this array. So we can use a simple for each loop for that. If any of the cells of the block array are same with respect to the x and y values of this block then we can return a true value and we will then use it inside our nested for loop so inside this for loop we can fetch block for each iteration and this block is the individual cell of the table grid and we will call this array has block function to check if this block is similar to any of the array items inside this snake array and if it is not then we will simply push it to the blocks array as one of the available blocks and then finally we can return this blocks array to be used to fetch the random rodent now let's first fetch the available blocks array this can be done by calling this function get available blocks and then providing the arguments for the size and the snake object let's now use any random cell which is inside this available block as the rodents starting location so let random idx equals to get random int and then we will provide the range so it is going to be 0 and available blocks dot length minus 1 and then finally we can return the cell block with the x and y coordinates at the position of random idx inside this available blocks array now we can create the rodent object by getting a random location by simply calling this get random rodent function. If you have watched part 1 and if you remember, we created a div score div to keep and maintain the score and we can create a function to update that div's score value. Let's just call this function as update score and we will provide an argument for this score to this function and this function will simply set the inner html of div score with a text having a score and the score value. Let's just update the initial score too by calling this function and providing the initial score which is 1 which we set while creating the global variables. Now it's time to create the function which will be called to redraw the grid in each frame and this will be called as redraw grid. This function is going to accept a bunch of arguments for the size, the table, the snake and the rodent. 
the first thing that we need to do inside this function is to set the css class of each of the cell as block off because we will first clear everything this can be done by using a simple nested for loop after that we are going to set the css class for the snake head which is named as block snake head and this can be done by fetching the x and y values for the snake head and then using that values as the query selector arguments because the blocks that we have created for the table grid are being named by using the x and y values for the loop iterations so that we can find them using the x and y values of either the snake's head the snake's tail segment or any of the rodent values we can set the css classes for the snake's tail segments too by simply iterating over each of the tail segment the css class for the tail is block snake tail and then finally we will need to set the css class for the rodents location which is block snake rodent by using the rodent objects x and y value now when we have created the function to draw the grid in each frame we can call it first time to first draw the initial grid to update the game's state in each frame we will need to write a function and we are going to use the javascript's set interval in that function so first let's create that frame and it is going to be called as start frames so this is going to accept a bunch of arguments for the size the table snake object and the, and the rodent object we will need to create a function and then we will use that function inside the javascript's set interval function this will allow us to update the interval while increasing the speed of the snake so let interval function is going to be this will be an array function in which we will write our code and then when this function will be finished then we will simply create a new set interval and we will assign its return value to the frame interval variable which we created above as a global variable having a return value for this set interval will allow us to clear this interval and then again set it all right so this interval function is going to be called in each frame and the first thing that we need to do over here is based on the new direction we need to set the snakes and the rodents position if the rodent has been consumed by the snakes head so to get the next block based on the direction we can call the get directional block function which we created and we will provide the snakes head x and y values and we will provide the direction which is the current direction based on the user input if the next directional block is invalid then we will need to stop the game and tell the user that the game is over so if the next block is not valid the next block is this one which we fetched by calling this get directional block function then we will simply tell the user that the game is over so game over and for that we will create a function to update the message let's just call it game lost and we will create this in a moment and we will also clear the interval which is the frame interval so that this interval function will stop executing for each of the iteration so frame interval let's just create the game lost function and we can do that over here this game lost function will simply update this div scores inner html and while keeping the existing content it will simply add a new message you lost so if the next block is not invalid then it is either going to be the rodent or it is going to be an empty block if it is a rodent then we will need to consume it and then increase the tail's size of the snake and if it is not a rodent then we will need to move the snake's head in that direction along with all of its tail segments so in the else part if the block is valid then first we will check if the next blocks x is equal to rodents x and next blocks y is equal to rodents y if it is then the next block belongs to the rodent and we will need to increase the snake's tail size and because this snake will be consuming the rodent we will also need to increase the score and also decrease the speed so let's just increase the score by 1 and decrease the speed by 10 if the speed is less than 10 then we will need to set it to 10 because 10 is already a low enough value i don't really think that anyone can play at that speed but still we don't want it to become negative or zero and because we have updated the speed we will need to clear the existing interval by calling clear interval and we will need to set it again by 
again calling the code to set the frame interval using the set interval function with the new speed and the interval function which is over there because the score has been updated we will also need to call this update score again to update the div scores internal html value now because the snake's head has consumed the rodent what we are going to do is we will put the snake's head at the rodent's position and we will add a new tail at the snake's previous position and then we will create a new random rodent inside the grid so let's just update the snake's tail so snake's tail is going to be a new array and the first tail segment is going to be the snake's head so x is going to be snake.head.x and y is going to be snake.head.y and then we will need to place the rest of the tail segments for that we will use the spread operator snake.tail now let's set the snake's head position as the rodent's position by simply setting the reference of the snake's head object as the same one which is belonging to the rodent object and then finally we can get a new rodent by calling the get random rodent function by providing the argument values for the size and the snake so this code will run if the next block is on the rodent if it is not on the rodent then we will need to move the snake to the next block along with all of its tail segments this can be simply done by adjusting the snake's tail value and setting them with the previous tail segments values x and y the first tail segment will be on the snake's head and the snake's head will be on the next directional block so let's first get the snake's head object inside a temp variable set the snake head on the next block or the next directional block now we will just write a simple loop which will start from the snake's tail length and it will go to 1 and it will simply shift the x and y values of all of the snake's tail segments and it will set the values to the previous segment's value and finally the first tail segment will be equal to the initial snake head which we set inside the temp variable and that's pretty much it now when we have done all of that then we will need to redraw the grid again with the updated values and this can be done by simply calling redraw grid function by providing the arguments which it needs and that's pretty much it for the start frames function the bulk of the code for this game has been written after we have created the start frames function we will need to start the game and we are going to start the game after two seconds to give the user you know some kind of preparation time to figure out in which direction it needs to move the snake initially this can be done by calling the set timeout function and providing a delay of two seconds after two seconds the start frames function will call and the game will begin and this will be the end of part two of this video series and to summarize we have created a random rodent in this video we have written the functions to update the score and to redraw the grid in each frame and we have also created the main interval function which will be called for each of the frame to update the state of the game depending on the user input and in the last part we are going to write the code to accept the user input and then provide that input as um, you know the updated direction in which the snake needs to move and then we will also run the code to see if it is working or not so i will see you in part 3 and be sure to watch part 3 if it is available if it is not available then please wait for a while while i am still creating it otherwise you can also check out the source code for this game which i have provided in the description of the video and i will see you in the next part till then have a great time